Thank you to the organizers to give World Resources Institute an opportunity to share our experience on monitoring forest and landscape restoration. My name is Bernadette Arakuye. I'm a GIS and remote sensing analyst with World Resources Institute. I'm going to talk to you about how we used collector to monitor restoration in Rwanda. We did this work in collaboration with Rwanda Water and Forestry Authority, IUCN, and University of Rwanda students. Let me start by stating some of the reasons why we want to monitor FLR. We want to showcase successes and failures and to build on that experience and knowledge during planning or scaling up of projects. We also want to generate information that contributes to transparency and accountability during project management. The information is also used to report back to investors or can be used to raise more funds. To gather monitoring data can be very expensive, particularly when using field surveys. However, common cost and time effective monitoring approaches, such as those used to monitor deforestation, may not be applied to restoration. This is because restoration happens slowly, it is small and scattered, and depending on the project, it can have various goals and impacts. Thus, there is a need for innovative monitoring approaches that can be tailored to the unique nature of FRR projects. Such innovations should be user-friendly and accessible to a wide range of stakeholders, such as those involved in forest and landscape restoration. Collect Earth is proving to be a great approach to monitor FRR. Collect Earth is a desktop-based, open-source, user-friendly tool that draws upon a selection of other software to facilitate data collection. Collect Earth is developed under the Open Forest Initiative. This is a collaborative effort of different public and private institutions and it is hosted by the Forestry Department of the FAO. Collect Earth has two main components. The first component comprises high resolution satellite data interpretation from Google Earth, Bing Maps, Google Earth Engine, as well as data entry. The second component is for data analysis and visualization. I'm going to provide a detailed architecture of Collect Earth in the next slides. When using Collect Earth, we go through a series of steps broken into three major parts. The first one is, is preparation, the second one is what we call mapathon, and the third one is re results and feedback sharing. We start with designing the survey comprising biophysical information that will be filled in by users during satellite image interpretation and data entry. This step is participatory. Consultations are held with stakeholders to select indicators that can be monitored to make sure the survey is relevant and the right data will be collected. Next, we generate a sampling grid this can be done using QGIS or other software. The user is free to choose a sampling approach, be it systematic, random, or use stratifications. Here, it is important to bear in mind that the denser the survey, the more time it may take and the more money it may cost. The following step is to conduct what we call mapathon. This activity involves coordinated data collection between different users. When we did the mapathon, we had 20 participants all sitting in one room for about one week. Each participant was assigned specific plots from the grid. There is now a Collector Online app which allows crowdsourcing data. This would reduce the cost of convening all participants in one place. Next steps are field verification to check the accuracy of collected data and then data analysis and results dissemination. 
This slide is showing a systematic sampling grid displayed over a spot image hosted by Google Earth in Gatsibo district located in eastern Rwanda. Each of the yellow dots represents a plot. We had a total of over 4,000 plots, 500 meters apart. Each plot was 50 by 50 meters. Google Earth is the main interface for Collect Earth. The user can enter data using the most recent image or browse for historical imagery using the historical tool. When you click on a plot, the survey opens. On this slide, you can see some of the information we were filling in during Gatsibo Mapathon. We were recording information on vegetation types, changes in land cover and land use, any noticeable feral project, etc. at the plot level. The yellow dots inside the plot are used to estimate percent cover of different land use or feature types within a plot. In our case, each plot has 25 dots. Therefore, each dot represents 4% of the plot. For instance, in this plot, five dots are touching the canopy of trees. This means that trees cover 20% of the plot. The user continues to fill in the information until all cards are completed. Collector surveys can be customized to make sure some fields are required. This ensures that specific information is always filled in. In such cases, the user cannot submit plot data when there is some missing information, as indicated in this first card. Once the user is done filling in the information, they press send and collector takes the user to the next plot. The completed plot has a green check arrow. After data collection, we went to the field to verify a sample of plots using Open Data Kit mobile app. There is also a collect mobile app that allows data collection and validation in the field. Data entered during Mapathon automatically populates Saiku. Saiku is also an open source tool embedded in Collector. It allows fast and robust visualization and analysis of data using an interactive drag and drop interface. This slide is showing you how many plots experienced land cover change over time. Collector data can also be exported as a CSV to be analyzed in external software such as Excel. Collector data can be presented in various formats. For instance, this graph is showing average number of trees per hectare in each sector of Gatsibo district. The where and how much is the kind of detailed information district staff are usually, are usually looking for, for to understand the impact of different restoration projects or when planning for restoration. Data like this can be used as a starting point to seek additional information to understand why some sectors remain understocked despite restoration efforts. This data can also be used to target restoration activities. With Collect Earth, we get statistics on FRR indicators, on how FLR indicators are changing over time within sampling plots. To get world to world information, Collect Earth data can be imported into Google Earth Engine using fusion tables and then used as training sites to produce wall-to-wall -wall land cover and land use maps from freely available satellite images. This is Gatsibo land cover map classified using the random forest algorithm on Landsat 8 image. We, also, we are also producing the land cover using Sentinel 10 meter resolution images 
and we hope to see an even more detailed picture of land covers in the district. So to date, we have completed data collection. We are in the process of validating final results with Gatsibo district staff and inquiring from them how such information may be used at the district level. When we presented the preliminary results from Gatsibo to either government official or NGOs in the country, they all show interest in collector. However, very few people have the time to use the resources on Open Forest website to teach themselves collector. WRI is now working with stakeholders in Rwanda to develop step-by-step -step training tutorials, including videos in Kenya, Rwanda. Training tutorials will also include a data interpretation component to make sure collector data are going to be used correctly. These materials will help us build more capacity and hopefully enable the adoption of collector for monitoring FRR in Rwanda. To conclude, we want to share some of the lessons and mention conclusions. What we have learned is that Collect Earth is a cost-effective and sustainable monitoring approach for forest and landscape restoration since it facilitates data collection from an archive of freely available satellite images such as in Google Earth, Bing Maps, etc. We found that to get accurate information, it is important to work with participants that have an intimate knowledge of the landscape. We are working on training materials that will help us build more capacity in using collector for monitoring FRR in Rwanda. Lastly, as we all know, Google Earth is great, but sometimes the images are not always up to date. In Rwanda and similar to other tropical regions, image may also have lots of clouds. This would impact timely data collection using collector. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to take any questions.